what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video hey first and foremost happy friday but today we're going to be talking about a rumor that doesn't feel like it would ever happen but since we do have 2k i kind of want to make it happen to have a little bit of fun today we are once again talking about jimmy butler i've already done a couple of videos on him but this one is kind of crazy apparently the warriors would be very interested in jimmy butler if he were to become available once again i'm not saying that jimmy butler is going to be available but if he did, apparently the Warriors are interested. Now, as we all know, the NBA is extremely unpredictable. So maybe this does happen crazy. You know, something outlandish and crazy like that would not surprise me in the NBA whatsoever. But it does sound kind of too wild to be true to Jimmy Butler to the Warriors go play with like Stephen Curry or something like that. So today we're going to make it happen in 2K because more than likely it's not going to happen in real life. So let's just go ahead and jump in into this Jimmy Butler Golden State Warriors rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. This will also probably be the last time I talk about Jimmy Butler unless if like something concrete happens like he is traded. So I'll probably leave it at this unless if there's like a rumor that comes out from like Shams or Woj. Uh, obviously, most of this is just kind of like speculatory, but it sounds like the Warriors would be interested in Jimmy Butler uh, based off a couple uh, reports. One came from the, from the Athletic. So... Here's the structure of the trade so far, but we need to talk about the last two pieces of the trade. So, Kevon Looney, Moses Moody, two first round picks for Jimmy Butler. Obviously, that doesn't get it done. It does not match Jimmy Butler's salary whatsoever. So, the two salaries you have to throw in here, the three salaries, technically, if you're the Golden State Warriors that you could throw in here, is obviously either Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, or Chris Paul. Now, if I'm the Miami Heat, I think I'd rather have Chris Paul because he's an expiring contract. You don't have to worry about him. But maybe the Miami Heat want to stay competitive. So maybe they wouldn't mind having Andrew Wiggins. I don't know. The problem is, if we bring in Jimmy Butler, Andrew Wiggins and Jimmy Butler being teammates, again, would be very weird. I, I can't imagine those two get along in real life based off what happened in Minnesota. So for that reason, I think Wiggins would probably have to be in this trade. Although, like I said, you could convince me that Miami would probably rather have the expiring and Chris Paul than Wiggins contract. I'm not sure. But let's say it is Wiggins. That way, Wiggins and Jimmy Butler aren't teammates again. And I do believe if you're the Warriors, you're going, well, I don't know. Is this enough? Most Moody, two first round picks, Wiggins and Looney. Is that enough to get Miami to go ahead and send this through? I don't think so. I think you have to include one of Wiggins or Podjimski. And that might piss some Warriors fans off. And I would definitely understand that. Um, now, who would the Miami Heat rather have is the big question. I'm not 100% sure. But if one of those two had to be included, does that break the deal probably does i don't think this straight happens but i'm going to go ahead and include one of them anyway again i know you're probably gonna be upset by hearing that but i'm gonna go ahead and i think i'm gonna include podjimski just simply because miami may not have interest in paying kamenga right away so i think podjimski being locked up for three years is something they'd be interested in and obviously especially in 2k uh kamenga develops really nicely and podjimski kind of just goes up to like an 82 and like stays the same so we will include Podjimski. So this is the trade we are going to do for Jimmy Butler. Too rich, too little? Let me know down in the comment section below. Again, this is just hypothetical anyway. So this is just for fun. Nothing too crazy. Don't take it too seriously. So that trade is done. We could turn off over right now. So Jimmy Butler and Stephen Curry are teammates in the Bay, which is kind of fun. So Stephen Curry, Jimmy Butler, Draymond Green still here as well. Dr Jimmy and Draymond would be interesting. That's for sure. Now, Clay is a free agent still as well. It definitely would be interesting to see what the Warriors do with him. I think in this scenario, although you know, the last time we talked about it, you know, we last the thing we heard, it did feel like Clay leaving this team sounded like that's probably where this was headed. So we'll see what we do. But let's go ahead and see what we get in the early, late second round. So I'll take Aaron Bradshaw here out of Kentucky and we'll call it a day since we just you know traded away Looney. And then uh rookie signing Bradshaw welcome in. Player options, Gary Payton accepts. We can accept Lester as well qualifying offers uh osman group is a free agent i'm not too worried about any of these guys and then free agency uh do we have any important bird rights yeah clay of course so clay is asking for 24 million dollars and again if i'm the warriors and i just brought in jimmy butler i definitely think keeping clay could be interesting for sure but i'm not really sure i also want to find out what i can get for chris paul before i commit to signing clay thompson so Draymond Green, Trace Jackson Davis are starting rotation at the moment. Kamingas are starting power forward. Jimmy, Gary Payton, and then we need to figure out what we can get for Chris Paul services at the moment because his contract, I believe, is non guaranteed in real life, but 2K has already guaranteed it. So I guess I might as well go ahead and uh, try to trade him here. It says he wants to stay, but unfortunately, not going to happen, buddy. 
Today's video is brought to you by DGF's Optimizer. If you play on apps such as Price Picks, Underdog, or any other DFS app, having a tool like this is so clutch to finding good plays right in front of you without having to do any research whatsoever. So let's refresh the board really quick and see what we could find. So uh, we got Luka Doncic under 18 and a half rebounds and assists. That is a heavily favored play for tonight in the NBA Finals Game Four. Um, he did go under in the in the last game. It doesn't mean anything. Every game is different. Uh, but books early on are favoring him to go under his rebounds and assists. And then you got a no run first inning prop if you're into that. Um, and not much else. Kind of dry right now. You do have some fantasy scores on here as well. But as you can see, I found these plays within two seconds just like that. I absolutely love this tool. It's, it's made me a much profitable sports better over the long term. And it's been amazing to use because I've always loved playing on apps like, like prize picks, uh, other DFS apps. And uh, ever since I started using this, man, it's been night and day on how much better of a sports better I am. So make sure to check it out. Link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHBALLS, 25% off your first month. And of course, I use it on apps such as Price Picks, which, which I'm also partnered with. And I absolutely love Price Picks. Uh, just gives you an extra sweat while you watch any sport that you like to watch, whether it's NBA, MLB, NHL, maybe even esports if you're into that. So all kinds of stuff to choose from. Golf is even on here. MMA, like there's just so many endless possibilities on Price Picks. All kinds of stats to choose from as well when it comes to basketball. So as far as like I said, we could go to where, um, you know, we could go and plug in that, like, we don't have anything to pair it with at the moment. So Luka Doncic under 18 and a half rebounds and assists. So we could go ahead and plug and play that if we truly wanted to. And then, you know, we could like build out a slip with some of these fantasy scores in the moment. But um, yeah, so that's exactly how you would use this. But make sure to check it out. Links down in the description below. They match first deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. Like I said, use code CRUSHBALLS on the optimizer, 25% off your first month. Other than that, let's go trade Chris Paul. So when it comes to a Chris Paul trade, the Spurs were originally offering me Zach Collins, which I think could make some sense, but I do like my center rotation at the moment. Uh, and I think we need a shooting guard more than anything. So I do want to trade Chris Paul. And I did think we were a second apron team already, but we're not actually. So I can actually include another contract with it. So I know I just had him in the Cavaliers video, but I think Chris Paul of the Spurs makes a ton of sense, and we do need a starting two guard. I think Keldon Johnson could be kind of a filler there for now. Definitely not over the long term I want him to be there, but uh, like Vassell I think would be impossible to get, although he'd be amazing to have, but it'd be really tough to grab him from San Antonio for Chris Paul services. But I could maybe see the Spurs being okay with getting rid of Keldon Johnson, um, you know, maybe getting off his salary and then taking Chris Paul for a year, you know, to pair Wimby. So Chris Paul and Lester for Keldon, they don't agree to that. I'm not going to go for like, a, I'm not trading a first or anything like that. That sounds a little too crazy. What about a couple seconds? No, doesn't get it done either. And then I would throw you Gwai. But other than that, I'm moving off this. Nope, they agree. Okay, so we got Keldon Johnson. So I like Keldon Johnson as a starting two guard for a while. Or Jimmy Butler could be the starting two guard as well. Either way, it doesn't matter. I know Keldon goes down if you move in shooting guard. Uh, so I'll move Jimmy to the two. Why not? So Jimmy Butler will play in the backcourt. Not that it really matters that much. But yeah, so now we have Steph. We have Jimmy Butler, we have Keldon, Gary Payton, we have Kamenga, we have Draymond, and Trace Jackson Davis. So, definitely still more work to do, especially off the bench. We only have two bench pieces. We're absolutely confident, and that's Gary Payton and uh, Trace Jackson Davis. And as we know, Draymond's about to regress. Gary Payton's probably about to regress. So, definitely still some work to do on this bench. Uh, we might have to resign Clay low key. That will make us a second apron team. But I think for this video, since we brought in Jimmy Butler, we might as well go ahead and try to bring back Clay as well. I'm going to sign Clay to a two-year deal. We'll bring him back for this video. The last Warriors Ready build I did, I didn't bring him back. So it feels good to have him in this one. All right, what else we got? So we got Royce O'Neal. We have Gary Harris, Old Depot. Uh, so we have Clay as our starting shooting guard, right? So that's great. So Clay, or not starting, but he's going to be our bench shooting guard. Pans are backup small forward at the moment. So we basically need a power forward or a backup point guard. I see Monte Morris, which uh, might be the move. Uh, power forward position. You do have like Matu, Gallinari, Nicholas Batum, but these guys are just going to regress. I think I have to go for Monte Morris. So good old reliable Monte Morris who you can get on an MLE. So we'll do that. So welcome to the Golden State Warriors, Monte Morris. All right, player progression. We have Steph, Jimmy Butler, Draymond, Clay all going down. Not surprising. Monte Morris also down. So will this work out? That remains to be seen. Obviously, this could really be disaster and this Warriors team goes nowhere because of how old they are. But this is just experimental, fun little video today. Jimmy Butler on the Warriors paired with Stephen Curry. Sounds fairly interesting. So let's take a look at the rotation going into next season. I mean, 
I would imagine bringing in Jimmy Butler makes us good, but you never truly know with this game. So probably he's going to land sixth overall. And then if we look at the proficiency under Mr. Steve Kerr, we are a four-star proficiency. All right, so I guess we'll leave it like that. So that is their starting five, which I actually kind of mess with. It's, you know, Steph, Jimmy, Keldon, Kamenga, Draymond, Clay, Trace Jackson Davis, Gary Payton, and Monty Morris. That's not a bad rotation by any means. Of course, there is the possibility of stopping the deadline and maybe make a move if we need to. Uh, but for now, we'll roll, we will roll with it like this. And then what are shots in C? So Steph's a 99. Or that's or sorry, 99. Kamenga's is an 80, and Jimmy Butler's is a 75. And then Keldon Johnson's is an 89. So Keldon, I don't need to be as good. Like, again, he is one of those guys where I don't think he is like our first option. So I'm going to move him down. Probably like a 70. And then touch tennis, they can go down too. So we'll do that. And then Kamenga, I do want him to develop this year because he's obviously our young stud that we decided not to trade. And then Jimmy Butler, I do still want to take shots as well. So we'll leave it at something like that. We'll see how it goes. And hopefully this team ends up being good because, you know, we just brought in Jimmy Butler and we don't want to just suck after that. That would be a disaster. So we'll see how this goes, though. And hopefully this team ends up being a top contender in the West. We got to deal with some young squads like Minnesota and OKC, Dallas, but... Uh, We'll, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna get it done this year hopefully so at the end of the season no awards go to us or anything like that uh but it was a successful regular season which is all we can really ask for after making the jimmy butler trade we didn't want it to you know be a disaster and this team didn't make the playoffs or something like that but thankfully it did not work out that way as we are the third seed in the western conference once again as i mentioned though we do have these young teams to deal with so i'm a little bit worried about how we'll do in these playoffs but we'll see how it goes so staff average is 26 22 from jimmy 17 from Kumanga, 14 from Clay, 13 from Keldon, and then uh, 9 and 7 from Trace Jackson Davis, which is great. Draymond was 7 and 7, and then 6 from Monte Morris, and then 5 from Yuri Payton. So, we are going to go ahead and shrink this down to an 8-man rotation for these playoffs, and uh, let's do something like this. So, Trace Jackson Davis is going to start, which I don't mind at all. Uh, so, we'll see how this goes. Uh, Houston in round 1. Houston shouldn't be that scary yet, but of course, they do have a solid team with Dylan Brooks coming back. So, Draymond Green... Versus Dylan Brooks should always be fun. Amon Thompson off their bench. So I would not be surprised if this team beat us in round one. Low key, not going to lie. But hopefully that doesn't work out or hopefully it doesn't go that way. So somebody come around against Houston and we are going to beat them in five. So that's a good start. Sacramento case takes care of Denver. And then OKC and Minnesota both get taken care of. So this would be a great time to take advantage and uh win this thing it would be a great time not gonna lie so Darren Fox Kevin Herter Harrison Barnes Keegan Murray Sabonis Sadiq Bay Jacoby Walter Keon Ellis and Davion Mitchell Draymond Green versus Sabonis once again more beef there so let's go ahead and see if we could take down the Kings and we are going to be up three to one and just like that we are in the conference finals which is fantastic so and now we get the AFC to Pelicans. So we don't even have to do with Luka Doncic. I think this is the best possible time to get a championship done and you know done out of the way immediately. So let's make sure we do that. It is the Pelicans still, so I guess I can't really sleep too much because you know Zion and 2K, you know, especially like back then when he first got in the game, we used to be like just unstoppable. But hoping for the best here. Somebody current round, and we are Woo, that was close but we beat them in seven and now we get the atlanta hawks which is another team you just sometimes you just don't understand as they sweat the 76ers like for whatever reason they're just like very good and they're hard to beat so let's go ahead and go game by game here so game one one to zero beat them by 30 game two they even it up game three two to one let's get a championship for steph and jimmy and it does work out for a championship in year number one w this is exactly what we wanted to see because wasn't sure how good this team would age, and uh, I'm glad we got it done right away because uh, going to next year, I'm not sure I'm too confident in this team be able, being able to get it done again. So we get it done, which is amazing. Jimmy Butler finals MVP, so Jimmy joins Steph, and we get a championship in year one. I mean, that bracket really swung our way, man. really did. The Western Conference really cleared out for us. We got, you know, some of the worst teams in front of us. Denver gets eliminated. Minnesota gets eliminated. Dallas gets eliminated. OKC gets eliminated. So that, like, just really swung our way. And sometimes it works out like that. So I guess I'm too, you know, I'm a little happy about that. But we would have saw, like, OKC. I don't know if we would have won. It would have been really tough. But Blazers just get one. Thunder are about to get better. And then our pick, of course, is... Uh, actually, I think we have our pick in this draft, if I'm not mistaken. It's next year's draft. We don't have it. So... In this draft, it is... No, this is the draft that uh, the Warriors have in my bad. Or that the Heat have our pick. So, 
We don't have a draft pick. Kenny Atkinson is gone, but maybe Jason Kidd wants to join our staff after seeing ourselves win a championship. So let's get Jason Kidd in here and then we can grab Mr. Goldman. Boom. That is done. All right, let's go to draft night. And uh, we don't have a draft pick to hit on, unfortunately. Uh, we obviously just sent it out. So uh, we have a three first, but nothing crazy here. Keldon, I mean, this team worked out, but I do want to build on that, obviously. I did extend Gary Payton because, you know, what else was I going to do? Uh, so let's go straight to play options. Part of me knows Clay is going to suck next year and regress even more. Uh, so Jim Butler is a free agent. We obviously got to resign him. But yeah, like, like I was saying, part of me knows Jim Butler, or not Jim Butler, uh, Clay is about to regress and he's going to suck even more. But I would also feel dirty trading him away. So I think I'm going to keep him. So Jimmy, of course, is going to get that extension he you know, was promised to get. Obviously, if he's traded somewhere, I assume they give him an extension right away. And we do have to resign Kamenga as well. So that is all done. So Jimmy Butler, Steph are our max contracts, of course, at the moment. And then we do have money to sign like one more player, which is great. So Steph, Monty Morris, Clay Jimmy, Gary Payton, Keldon, and then Trace Jackson Davis, Draymond Green. So that obviously all worked out in a championship last year. But let's be honest with ourselves next year we're not winning i don't think we're gonna win next year uh so i definitely think we gotta do something to try to booster our chances but i'm not really sure what that something would be it would be like clay's expiring but once again i would just feel so dirty and trading him uh you know we got another championship with clay draymond and stuff which is really cool uh so command good discovery sign keldon i mean maybe keldon would be the guy to move but uh we do we are over the second apron i imagine so we only have what let's see how much money we have to send out 17 million dollars so that's nothing like kind of nothing to use so i guess maybe our best option well i guess since we're at a second apron 2k gives us the ability to use uh, mle but uh we definitely don't have that luxury if you're over the second apron in real life you don't have the luxury to use the mle so we might be stuck with what we got which kind of sucks we can sign minimums though so you know what we'll do is uh we'll go to day 12 and see if we can steal somebody for the minimum so we'll we'll look into that so Day 12, I guess what I would want is a power forward, potentially, I, I assume. So let's see. Yeah, power forward probably would be the best option. A backup shooting guard probably wouldn't be a terrible idea either. So let's see what we got. Luke Kennard on the minimum might not be too bad. Uh, power forwards, we got like Najee Marshall, Haywood Highsmith. So definitely some options here. Uh, maybe it is just Haywood Highsmith. So uh, can I give him the minimum? And he would accept the minimum, it looks like. So yeah, we got Haywood Highsmith on the minimum. So that's huge. And then Garuba's back. So Draymond regresses even more. Clay regresses even more. Again, not too surprising, but Garuba is up, which is nice. So maybe Garuba is our brand new backup center for the future uh, with Trace Jackson Davis. Being, well, I mean, Jackson Davis isn't developing enough to sit here and say he'll be the starter next year. But maybe at the deadline, we uh, look at a possible trade. I guess at the one position, I would love to upgrade to be the backup center. But again, Draymond and Clay and then Steph, like, they're all going to be out of, or they're all going to be, uh, you know, expiring this off season. So I assume we get a few retirements there. Uh, maybe Steph would hang it up after his contract or maybe he'd keep going. I'm not sure. Uh, but maybe this, maybe this is just a two year video. Who knows? So I guess we need a 2026 draft class, right? So let's go find that. And then we can go into next season and look at this rotation all together. One last time and uh see if steph's gonna retire is clay gonna retire is dream gonna retire so all very interesting to look at so probably gonna last 14th overall proficiency is four star once again and this is what it's looking like so steph jimmy and then keldon kamenga and then we obviously can go back to nine rotation so steph jimmy keldon kamenga draymond jackson davis clay gruba and then haywood i smith so that leaves monty morris and gary payton out of the rotation completely which is fine i forgot about aaron bradshaw as well it's in hand of the g league although i should have done that last year my bad but Let's go ahead. So wait this season. If I saw the deadline, I will show you. Probably won't though. Probably just gonna ride it out with this roster, especially if we're a good team, which I assume we will be. Uh, you know, Jimmy and Steph should still be able to carry us, but let's go ahead and see how this goes. So at the end of the year, number two, Luca wins MVP, Harper Rookie of the Year on the Brooklyn Nets. They could use a player like that for their future. Jamal Murray's on the Knicks as a six man. Very interesting. Okay. Here's John Bay first team. So I do have a couple announcements to make here. As Stephen Curry is not ready to retire, he was actually ready to sign extension. And we gave out a couple extensions, not going to lie. So we might have locked ourselves into poverty a little bit, but we are the second seed in the Western Conference. So here are your player stats. So uh, 30 points from Steph, 24 from Jimmy, uh, 17 from Manga, 14 from Clay, and then 12 from Keldon. So Keldon got an extension uh, worth like $13 million per year. Actually, it was kind of similar to what all these guys got. So Keldon, as you can see, 13, 15. Trace Jackson Davis extended him as well. Draymond won extension as well. So uh, he'll not make 25 next year, which is great. 
Uh, he had a player option to do so, but I guess he's, you know, taking a little bit of a pay cut in this scenario. But we are the second seed in the West still, which is great. But we are running into a Minnesota team that has a 99 Anthony Edwards. I do worry about my ability to win this year. not going to lie. But here goes nothing. So let's go eight man rotation again since this worked out last year. Somebody come around against Minnesota and we are going to beat them. Wow. I thought for sure we'd struggle there, but we beat them in five. And now I get the Sacramento Kings who have Jacoby Walters. So we beat this team last year. Obviously, Malik Monk left them, so that made them even worse. Sadiq Bey is there, though. So I cut around against the Kings, and we beat them in six. So just like that, we are back in the conference finals. Despite the old roster, that's not stopping us. Now we run into probably the, the team that dethrones us here, that being the Oklahoma City Thunder. But they draft, uh, they drafted, who did they draft um, with that second overall pick? Did I just miss it? Or what do they have? The third overall pick? Is that Colin Murray? Never heard of him. Is that a new guy I should be knowing about? Never heard of him. All right. Well, whatever. They took him. Okay. At least it wasn't like Ace Bailey or stuff. So game one goes to us, surprisingly. Game two. No way we beat the Thunder like this, right? No way. Three. To Wait a minute. We might be onto something. Wow, man. I thought for sure once we ran into the Thunder, it was over with. But uh sounds like Jimmy and Steph are doing their thing. Don't you know, don't get me wrong, still at 94 Steph and Curry, 91 Jimmy, so. But it's just age isn't our side. Charlotte got Evan Mobley, so I'm a little worried about our chances here. But here goes nothing. Game one, one to zero. Okay, we might be uh, going two in a row. Maybe back to back, back to back championships. Love, love to see it. Okay, Steph is your Finals MVP, so we go back to back. Clay is going to retire, and uh, do I allow him to come back for one more year and go for the three P? Or do we allow him just, you know, kind of retire on a championship? Probably just retire on a championship. That's probably the best thing to do. You know, we'll let him retire. So he's probably going to regress even more. So we'll let Clay retire. And that's what we'll do. So Spurs get one via Chicago. There's a chance that's supposed to be protected. But at this point, we got one last season on us anyway. We've already gotten two in a row. We're going to go for the three-peat, of course, like we usually do. But more than likely, we're probably not going to get it, I assume. Well, you know, I didn't think that last year. But and we did it. So maybe we do. 30th overall pick. In this 2026 draft, we got J.J. Starling, Ujman. We got Kobe Lucas. Uh, give me J.J. Starling, a guy who can learn behind Stephen Curry for a year or two. So he's a 70 overall. Player options, nothing going on there. Qualifying offers, Aaron Bradshaw is a free agent. So if we bring him back, uh, that might be interesting too. Gruba is a free agent. So um, I, I wonder if we're a secondary print team still. I imagine we're not. Uh, so yeah, we're not a secondary team anymore because guys got really cheaper, which is great. So Jimmy and Steph are only our max contracts and Steph really isn't making a max either, which is great. So we do have the ability to do some more things here. We have flexibility, which is great. So starting five is probably locked in because it's had success. Although I would not mind upgrading the center position, not going to lie. So maybe that moves, you know, maybe that means moving J, uh, Draymond Green back to power forward, potentially, depending if we can make a move happen. Uh, I'm not really sure who would. Yeah, there's really no one we could just like send out, though. So. Free agency, I guess it is probably in our best interest just to resign Garuba at this point because he's probably our best option here. Uh, Bradshaw, we can maybe bank on him being good, but I'm not really sure we can. Uh, we can bring in Bogdan for some more scoring, which I think I'll do. So I'll bring in Bogdan. Uh, so we'll grab him out of free agency. And then we can bring back Monte Morris again. So give me Monte Morris. So we'll bring back Monte Morris, who's won a championship with us a few times. Okay, so now, now that we have Garuba. We can move Draymond Green back to power forward, and he does stay the same, unfortunately, but we'll move him there. So, yeah, I don't know if I believe in my ability to win a championship for this third year. Um, I just, there just isn't, it just isn't there. I don't think it's in the cards, but again, I would love to be proven wrong. Maybe we have the ability to make a trade the deadline using Garuba's contract or Grace Jackson Davis. I mean, is there another salary throw in here? I guess it would be Gary Payton's or something, so... Um, yeah, I think we'll take this to the deadline and maybe look at making a move there if we feel like we need to make another move. Uh, but for now, since we just signed Gruba to a new contract, I'm not going to trade him immediately. And then Bradshaw coming back should help out as well. He's up to a 76. So maybe that's an extra asset we can use at the deadline. So Jimmy has regressed to an 89. So we'll see how that goes for us. But going for the three P in to this third season, we'll see how this goes and we'll see if it ends up working out for us. So rotationally once again parking this time only lands us 21st overall Gruba is the starter so yeah i think if i can upgrade the center at the deadline i definitely will look into doing so probably won't be easy to do but i will give it my best shot so let's go ahead similar to that deadline and see if there's a center to grab at the deadline to upgrade this roster but hey we're off to a 
good start in the regular season as we are four and one so love to see that at least so we're at the trade deadline as i decided to throw these three in the trade finder and man do we have some decent offers i'm not gonna lie so we got dink and peyton pritchard being offered to us from the boston celtics for bradshaw garuba gary payton in a second we also have okongwu being offered to us which i think would probably be the target we should go for um which probably would be a good idea if you're the warriors i think it'd be great to get dink and pritchard as well but I think more than anything, we do need a legitimate five man. And Okungwu would bring that to the table. So he's at 10, you know, 11 points per game, seven from re, uh, seven points or uh, seven points, seven points, seven rebounds. I don't know why I kept saying points, but he also, you know, shoots a little bit from three. So I'm going to go ahead and make this happen. Now, unfortunately, I do believe if you're doing this, though, you probably need a first round pick, not a second round pick. So they do accept that. So we get Okungwu as our upgrade at the deadline like we wanted to. So Okungwu is our brand new center, which is great. So Draymond, Monty Morris, Bogdan rounds up the rotation. Don't get me wrong, getting Pritchard and Dink would have been amazing as well. But I did want to prioritize that five-man spot. Right now, we are 29 and 21. So things are still going decently well. This is the final season, <coughs> no matter what. But, you know, we made the upgrade for Kongwu. So far, it doesn't go well, it looks like. So maybe we shouldn't have made a trade. I don't know. Uh, but we'll uh, keep going and see if things change or not. So final season here, Seven Curry still makes an All-NBA team, averaging 30 points per game. The man is still on a mission to go try to get another title. So can we go for the 3P here is the biggest question of them all. So we had 30, 25, 19, 14, 10, and 8. So hopefully we can do so so i am going to go to a man rotation like i've been doing these uh this entire video it's worked out we once again run into the kangs we keep beating them so ho oh they got luca now though so that could be a different story so luca and sabonis maybe luca is the guy that comes and stops us we haven't had to play him yet and that's where it all ends boys okay i had a bad feeling once i saw luca we were done for so uh sacramento does lose and now it's probably the thunder's turn to go win a championship just kidding it's the hornet's turn so evan mobley is your finals MVP. But hey, man, you know what? We got two in this video. I can't really be too mad about that. So probably just a quick little video. This one probably wasn't too long, but uh, Jimmy Butler to the Warriors is interesting rumor to say the least. Again, this will probably be the last time we do a Jimmy Butler rumor, unless there's something concrete really comes out. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed this one regardless. I will see you on the next one. Enjoy the finals tonight, game four. Do we get extension on the series? Is it going to be a four gamer? We'll see what happens. Of course, I would love as much basketball as possible. So rooting for Dallas once again to win. Um, again, it doesn't really matter to me who wins the series necessarily, but I would love to see more basketball. But hope you guys enjoyed regardless. I'll see you on the next one. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.